Hi everyone, this is Dr. Gail Carson. Welcome to Living Regret Free, a program that shows you how to live a better and more joyful life. As an added bonus, I invite you to listen to an introduction to my Mindset Matters program, which ties into this so well. Go to www.sobmindset.com. It's free and I know you will enjoy it. If you'd like to contact me personally, drop me a line at gailcarson13 at gmail.com or go to my website, www.spunkyoldbroad.com and sign up for my weekly newsletter. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Gail Carson, SOB, Spunky Old Broad, and I'm doing your version today of Living Regret Free. And it's interesting. I thought, what am I going to talk about with my folks today? And I was thinking about, you know, the time we're going through now and, and how everything is changing once again. And I thought one of the important things that we need to talk about, especially on living regret-free, is understanding who you are, understanding yourself. And, you know, there's an exercise that's done in business. And I think it's a really important exercise to be done for yourself as well. And many of you have heard of it. It's called the SWAT exercise, strength, weaknesses, obstacles, and threats. And, you know, I think if you look at what these things are in relationship to your everyday life, it makes you much more able to handle any situation that comes up any people you have to deal with, any event that surprises you, et cetera. So I want to talk about those. One of the things that my uh, son said to me yesterday, I'm very lucky he does call me every day. Uh, he said, Mom, he said, are you, how are you doing, you know, being alone and now that everybody's going out and doing things again and you're still staying home? And I said, you know, I'm doing fine because I'm not a depressed person. And I find so many interesting things in a day's journey that I just don't, it just doesn't uh, affect me the way most people, it, it affects most people. However, I will tell you that one of the things that I uh, have that's, you know, wonderful for me is that I have Ellie the cat and she just keeps me very interested and very excited. But, you know, when you look at these SWAT exercises, what are your strengths? I mean, what do you know you really do well? For example, one of the things that I know I do well is I meet people. I can talk to anybody about anything. Uh, I, can, uh, I can find usually topics of commonality and of interest, even though we're on very opposite sides of the fence. So dealing with people is something that is very easy for me. Uh, what am I not good at? Not good at technology. Not good at, you know, charts and graphs. If you show me a chart or graph, my mind goes blank, but you can show me pictures of things I would like that. So my strength is people, my weakness is the technology or graphs or charts. And uh, what, what am I terrific at? I'm terrific at usually thinking on my feet. I'm usually good about that. Uh, what am I not good at? Uh, solving intricate problems. You know, uh, you're not going to want me as a physicist or a scientist or someone like that. And what would I do no matter how much money I had because I enjoy it so much? I would do exactly what I am doing. I love doing my talk shows. I love coaching people. I love helping people get to their next goal, whatever it may happen to be. Those are the things that I enjoy. Um, but what do I always get compliments on? That, you know, I seem very enthusiastic, that I have a lot of energy and that I am very enthusiastic about what I do. Well, yeah, that is true. That is what I get. So you need to do that with your weaknesses, your strengths. And then where do you really need help? Uh, who should be on your team? And what will never appeal to you? And the reason I say those things are, first of all, where do you need help? For example, when I first started in the pandemic and couldn't get out, I was not doing Instacart. You know, Instacart is God. That's a, a great savior for everybody. Well, Instacart really helped uh, in terms of um, getting food to me. But I also had neighbors that came and provided me with things to eat and groceries. One neighbor even left 16 rolls of toilet paper at my door. Can you imagine? I mean, these were just so big surprises to me that I just loved it. But you know, that was some of the things that I needed help with. Who should be on my team? Who do you need? Uh, I would love, I started experimenting with um, 
food, uh, people who, who made food for you. In other words, these food delivery services. And I must have gone through four or five of them. And I really didn't like any of them. So I ended up, you know, just ending up ordering myself things that I didn't have to cook, but that I could eat and that were nutritious or that I could microwave. So what will never appeal to me? Uh, I watched yesterday on TV, uh, Emeril, you know, the, the chef, Emeril, with his new uh, big toaster oven type thing that he has. And I thought, that is fabulous. He must have shown 15 different things that he could make in it. And I thought, that is terrific. And I thought, that's just never going to work for me. I tried making milkshakes. They were disasters. I tried doing a sweet potato, which is probably the easiest thing to do. I really messed that up as well. So I know that I will never be a great cook or chef. But uh, so I need people to cook for me. That, 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 that's important. The other thing is, what are the opportunities that are around me? Well, there are opportunities in terms of people who are, uh, you know, needing things that I can help them with. There are opportunities in terms of uh, new ideas for media. Uh, there's opportunities uh, to help people in terms of uh, perhaps finding animals or, or putting them in the right slots, you know, for the right people. Uh, but there are many opportunities around you that you can help people with that you don't even think about. And so that's what I want you to start thinking about for this week. And that is, what are my strengths? What are the things I don't have to think about? They're second nature to me. I don't have to get training in them. Well, I mean, you always should be trained, but I don't really need to worry about it because it's something that I do very naturally. What are my weaknesses? What are the things that, you know, they used to say, well, whatever your weaknesses are, work at them. But then there was that saying that came out, you're not ever going to teach um, you know, something that can't swim to swim if it, if it doesn't have the ability to do that. And you're not going to teach a, a certain type of uh, animal to fly if it doesn't have wings. So it's important when you're thinking about your weaknesses to be able to understand what they are so that you can know when you need help. But you should also surround yourself with people who can help you with those weaknesses. And then, of course, the opportunities. There are things that come up opportunity-wise that you don't even think about because it's not part of your everyday, you know, oh, this is what I really need to pay attention to. But opportunities are there in some way, shape, or form almost on a daily basis, if not on a daily basis, at least on a weekly basis. So I want you to think about those. And then, of course, the threats. What is it that you could not have seen that you need to be prepared for? Almost look what, look what people went through in the pandemic. There were a lot of people that shut their eyes and they said, oh, this isn't going to last very long. And then it lasted over a year. And so their businesses just flopped. Well, there were people that flopped and there were people that figured out how to work around that. There are restaurants that did extremely well with delivery and with carry out. I know there was one restaurant that used to rent space in one of my buildings and so when the pandemic started and I found out that he was doing this takeout, I ordered from him. And then that was the only place I would go for takeout. And I would, and I had to tell you, he must have had 10, 12 people working in his restaurant because he was so busy with takeout and delivery. So there are ways to make a threat also an opportunity if you pay attention to it and how you work with it. And that's one of the things that I want you to be aware of. So once you do all of these things, you need to say, do you need to change something? Do you need to move to a different location? Do you need to do it in a different way? Do you need to take some study courses or get a different degree? Um, maybe you can apprentice to someone in another industry. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you might be able to handle uh, learning a new skill or changing uh, so that you have an opportunity. Just let your imagination run wild when you consider them. And then when you think about the threats, will you lose your family over this? If not, it's not as big a threat as you think. Do you have to move away from your grandchildren? I mean, there are a lot of people in my spunky old broad virtual uh, club on Facebook. There are two questions I always ask people when they join. What is your biggest pain and what is your biggest joy? Well, there's no question for the biggest pain, they talk about their pains. I mean, it might be their knees, their back, their feet, but it's usually their pains. 
when I ask what is their biggest joy, it has come down to two things, either their grandchildren or being able to do whatever they want without worrying about what people think of them because they don't care if people judge them anymore. So when you think about these threats, uh, is the cost of the threat going to be prohibitive? In other words, is it going to shut down your business? Is it going to shut down how you do things? Is it going to take too long? Will you lose your credibility if you continue? I mean, there's a lot of things you have to consider. But the most important thing, as far as I'm concerned, is does it have to do with your family or your wealth? 